Well, we are under a red flag condition here at Talladega. We have had 20 different leaders, 34 lead changes, along with Andy Petrie and Dale Jarrett. I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. And DJ, what do the drivers think about this procedure where you red flag a race with just six laps to go and you sort of just sit there and wait? Yeah, I think the, the best thing NASCAR has done over the last few years is bring the guys some water because you're, you've obviously been in there for a couple of hours. You're hot and sweaty, and then all of a sudden you stop, and there's no air. You, it's not like you can run a fan or anything because you've got the car cut off. But I think for the most part, as far as the racing goes, if we pulled back through the top 20, most of them would have a different answer. The guys up front would say, hey, why didn't we keep running around? We're going to have a green-white checkered anyway because they just want to see a couple of laps. They know that doesn't give these guys back in 10th or 12th a real chance to get up to the front. But if you talk to those guys back towards the back, they say, well, this is great. Now I'm going to have a few more laps to get the job done. So everybody's going to have a little different answer, and, and each week that would depend. That would be different depending on where you're running at. Well, the fans have to love it, and I love it. I mean, yeah, to be able to see the last these last six laps under green and all the lead swapping and racing and drafting at Talladega. As a crew chief, Andy, over the years, what were your concerns when a race was red flagged? Well, I always wonder whether it's going to start back and, uh, you know, the battery might be dead. And then you kind of worry about it maybe getting hot. When you let these cars sit and heat soak without the fan and the water pump and all that turn, you kind of wonder whether it's going to get hot, not want to crank back up. But uh, once it gets going, I think you feel okay about it. The one thing that I do like about NASCAR red flag in the race is that here at these tracks, these restrictor plate tracks, it takes so long to get wound up and for these cars to get to full speed that they really don't even get to race it until after they've run a lap, lap and a half. So saving those laps on the board is going to give these fans a whole lot better finish. Once again, we are under a red flag condition here. The seventh or parking of the eighth caution flag of the day coming out with a major incident on the backstretch involving eight cars. One of those involved was Marcus Ambrose. He's standing by with Mike Massaro. And Doc, somehow Marcus Ambrose is still smiling. Why? Well, I guess I got my first Alabama slammer, you know, uh, actually had two. I spun out the start of the race as well. Just, you know, just proud to be here. Uh, Kings for Charcoal support me. No, it wasn't a great day, but we did well. We were running right at the front there towards the end and having a great time. You know, here I am spinning out in front of the whole pack of Talladega and, uh, and live to tell the tale, you know, so uh, I, I'm just here for the experience. It's just a wild ride and just loving every minute of it, even on the bad day. So uh, we're here, you know, we're enjoying ourselves, but hopefully next week we be better. Well, Doc, you got to love his attitude, that's for sure. He is a very popular driver from Tasmania, which is an island just south of Australia. He told me in the garage area he gets hundreds of emails a day from down under. He said they all begin with the word mate and end with the word mate. He said, I love it, though. I love hearing from the home folks. Marcus Ambrose, leader of the Robustus Rookie of the Year standings, but not having a good afternoon here as he was involved, along with seven other cars in the eighth caution flag of the day here at Talladega. We hope to go back to green when we come back in just a moment. Well, next week we head to the action track for some night racing in Richmond, Virginia. Watch as drivers kind of keep a level head at this big little short track. The NASCAR Bus Series at Richmond on ESPN2, Friday, May 4th, 7.30 Eastern Time. Also available in high definition on ESPN2 HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Back at uh, Talladega Super Speedway, we are under a red flag condition. There is Tony Stewart being shown in the seventh position right now in the, the Chevy, the Old Spice Chevrolet. One of the big uh, topics of discussion all week long, Dale Jarrett, was Tony Stewart's commentary on his radio show early in the week where he questioned uh, the authenticity of some of the debris caution flags. When you saw what Tony said and read the, read the, uh, the release, what were your thoughts as a driver? Uh, I think what I saw was uh, a young man that uh, is very good for our sport, that's a little frustrated, that thought that maybe a couple had worked against him. And I'll just, being an older guy, tell Tony, and I'm sure that he heard it in his meeting yesterday with NASCAR, that you stay around this sport long enough, things kind of even out for you. You're going to have some things work against you with some of these cautions. Some of them are going to work for you. But the one thing that we can't do in this, I'm sure that Tony knows this by now, there was probably a little more diplomatic way for him to call up NASCAR on Monday or Tuesday and, and discuss that with them. And then he could have said what he wanted to on his radio show uh, about that maybe we need to take a look at this. But we can't take away the individuality 
from this sport of these different drivers and, and what they have to say. We have to continue to have that. So uh, I, I don't fault him what he what he did. I think he probably learned a lesson and next time, because he's going to continue to speak and we like that, but he's probably going to go about it a little different way. He said he didn't want to say the wrong thing after the race at Phoenix, so that's why he left the racetrack and did not go and be available to the media. That's why he was fined and put on probation uh, because he said, I didn't want to blow up. I wanted to have time, but I guess he simmered for a couple of days <laughs> and it still came out on Tuesday. Now, he says that he met with NASCAR early in the weekend here, and I'm quoting from Tony's release. He said, uh, after my meeting with NASCAR, it was a little tender for me to sit down, and he laughed. He said, <laughs> obviously, got a bit of a behind chewing in the truck uh, because he has been very good for this sport, and obviously a lot of frustration driving his tail off, but as a veteran driver like Tony, how frustrating is it to have those debris yellows come out late in the race when you think you might have a shot? Yeah, you, and you don't know exactly how things might have played out, but I think we've all been in that position, and what you want to do is just understand that hopefully the next time that that happened, that it's going to benefit me. But that's hard to swallow right at the moment. But the other thing, and then I spoke with Tony this morning. We had a good talk, and I wasn't talking to him about that necessarily. Wasn't counseling him by any means because he knows exactly how to handle himself. But, uh, you know, we just talked that you have to understand that these things are going to happen. It is frustrating, but we all do have obligations that when this race is over and we finish in the top three, we have to go to the media center. And that's difficult. And I think next time he'll probably go there and just say enough to get by, but do his obligation with that and then think of things that, and then dress them in a, a little bit better way the, the next time that that happens. But this is just a great competitor, right? here that doesn't like having win. you know he's out here he said it today he's out here for the trophies you know it, it's not about the money he's out here to win trophies he has been a great ambassador for the sport as a two-time nascar nextel cup champion been very successful in nextel cup racing although he has had his troubles here at talladega this was a year ago when he got a tap from behind and his car went up on its roof and came down on the door only to come back around troubles at talladega and of course tony stewart has raced four times prior to today at the world's fastest stock car facility and folks he has yet to finish his first race. Four DNFs hoping to get a finish and maybe a win here as we get ready to go green when we come back. ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Bush Series on ABC. Brought to you by Aaron's. With over 1,400 stores nationwide, everyone's a lucky dog at Aaron's. And Holiday Inn Racing. Always stay under green. Back for the final laps here at Talladega Super Speedway, a track that's known for its fabulous finishes, its drama, and in, uh, in the fact that we have the big one. We just came off the big one. Seven or eight cars involved, seven cars damaged in that incident. That brought out the eighth caution flag of the afternoon. And we have four laps left. We have had 34 lead changes among 20 different drivers. We are one away, one lead change away from tying the all-time Bush Series record. And Casey Mears has been the car to beat. There's a look at Casey in the 24 car, and he has led 46 laps today. Mears uh, been, has been awfully good. Of course, uh, they, they pay tribute each week to a, a National Guard unit, and this weekend it is the 155th Armored Brigade out of Mississippi. A lot of them in attendance today to watch that 24 car run, and behind him, 21, is Kevin Harvick, and in comes the young driver, second-generation driver David Reagan in the sixth car. I tell you, Casey Mears got to play some major defense here with just a few laps to go. I'm sure these guys are going to be all over him. <laughs> 